Have you ever gone through all the work trying to get the Shizuku app and service up and running, only to notice that it stops almost immediately after you start it? This is actually a common problem that can be fixed after making sure you have a few settings configured properly. But this can also be caused by one of a few different reasons. So here today, I'll go over all of these things that you need to look out for to make sure that your Shizuku application isn't having any conflicts with your Android device. The most common issue that I've seen with people trying to get Shizuku up and running is when the service seemingly cuts off out of nowhere. Nine times out of 10, this is caused by the app not being allowed to run in the background. And if this is the case for you, it's actually a pretty easy fix. We can check to see if it's a battery optimization feature by first long pressing on the Shizuku application icon and then tapping on the little I icon to dive into the app info page. Now from here, you're gonna scroll down a little bit until you find the battery usage menu. And then from here, you're gonna see a couple of things that you need to check on. Naturally, you want to make sure this app is allowed to run in the background. So check to see if this first toggle is enabled. But then you actually want to tap onto the text itself to go into a secondary menu. And from here, you will likely see an option to set the application to either optimized or unrestricted. Optimized means that you want the Android operating system to make sure that the app does not stay running in the background for too long, which is usually what you want to happen, as most of you will want the service to stay active for as long as possible. And this means that you actually want to set the background usage option over to unrestricted. Now, some other phones may word this differently, I have seen on my Red Magic 10 Pro that it has three options listed here, and each of them needs to be set to allow in order for the Shizuku app to run properly in the background. I have noticed that some people do not like the idea of keeping the developer options menu enabled all the time. So they tend to disable this toggle up here at the top when they're done messing with these settings. But disabling the developer options menu or even turning off the USB debugging toggles can also cause the Shizuku service to stop running. The service needs these two settings to be left on if you want Shizuku to run in the background. Another reason why you could see the Shizuku service stopping at random times could be from the USB configuration setting that you are using. The developers of Shizuku recommend that you change the feature to make sure that it's only charging and that there is not any data transfer happening. And we can make sure to set this up properly from within that developer options menu as well. You'll want to scroll through that list and find the default USB configuration option. And then when we tap into that, anyone who is on Android 8 will want to set this feature to charge only. But if you are using Android 9 or higher, then the wording that you're looking for is no data transfer. Another thing to point out, anyone who has Android 11 or higher installed will want to look out for another setting within the developer options menu. You can find it 
by scrolling down into the debugging section. And there's going to be a toggle here labeled Disable ADB Authorization Timeout. And this is probably not something that will cause the Shizuku service to stop immediately after you enable it, but it is something the developers think you should look into. So if you are having trouble with this service, then definitely make sure to check out this setting and toggle this feature on so that you are disabling the ADB authorization timeout feature. Sadly, there are some OEMs who have implemented some firmware features that actually end up conflicting with the Shizuku service. Anyone using the EMUI firmware, which is installed on many Huawei phones, you'll want to make sure the allow ADB debugging option from within the developer options menu is set to charge only. Then, anyone using the Mi UI firmware from Xiaomi, you'll want to make sure that you are not using Mi UI's security app in its default state because it does not like to see the developer options menu stay enabled. And that goes for people who are running Hyper OS as well. And lastly, those who are using a Sony smartphone or tablet will want to make sure that you do not click on the dialog that appears after you make a connection via USB, as that will end up changing the usage mode that it's currently set to, which will end up causing the service to have issues as well. Getting the Shizuku service up and running can seem like a daunting task if you're running into one of the many issues that I outlined here today. And sadly, this video isn't able to cover every single issue that can arise with the app. But I do hope that I was able to walk you through the most common issues that people are experiencing. So, if you're still having trouble with Shizuku, then please share those details down in the comment section below. And I want to thank each and every one of you who stuck with me through to the end of this video. It really means a lot to see these 100% watch time stats on these videos. And please, do not forget to click on that like button down below and subscribe to the channel as well for more Android content about Shizuku and all of its modules.